Praise the Lord, everybody. I hope everyone is all right. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. I thank you for this wonderful opportunity to come and speak to your people. Use me, help me to say only what it is that you want me to share. You've declared this to be so. You've commanded it to be so. So I'm going to be obedient in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, again, I want to I wanna say yes. You see this cut and, and pausing because there are times where I stop because I want to hear the Lord speak and I resume, but I don't want to hold you hostage waiting for those moments where I stop. So yes, it is edited for that sake so that you can get the clarity and just get right to it. Praise him. So uh, I thought it good to share the wonders and the high things and the signs that the Lord has wrought. Um, I have an encouragement for the body of Christ. <clears throat> I'm cleaning up my basement as well as the Sabbath is <laughs> trying to go get, you know, prepare for the Sabbath. Now. I'm trying to clean up now. But um, there's some things the Lord has been pressing me to share with you all. And, you know, as I always say by the Holy Ghost, I wait. I don't just jump up and share everything that he says, um, you know, because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to wait um, and share what he says. Share. So now he's released me to share. And it is a lot. So bear with me. I'm going to share a lot. Um, but hear, and he that hath the ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say, let him hear. And I have to start with one thing the Lord uh, wants to share is you all have to um, <coughs> you have to understand one thing. When it comes to the times and the dangers of these times, especially the deception, and this is essentially the, the, the foundation and the seed of what he wants to say, you have to recognize that we are not being deceived. By humans in this season, some of some of the the reason why a lot of people are falling and a lot of people are being deceived and don't know it. Listen, by the by, hey glory, hey glory. Listen by the Holy Ghost. The reason why so many people are being deceived and don't even realize it is because they think that it's people that will deceive them, not recognizing that it's spirits. It's a beast. It's it's the devil. It's the enemy himself. That is going to whisper, influence, and even himself deceive many, the beast, the antichrist, all that. It's not humans. So some of us are so prideful to think, oh, no human can deceive me. I can't. No man's going to be able to tell me. And you don't realize it's not the spirit of a man <laughs> that is that is seeking to deceive you. But it is the spirit of the enemy <clears throat> that is uh, even uh, being uh, uh, piloting or puppeting puppeteering these people and causing you to be deceived that is why it's so slick that is why it's so um easy and so it's so easy to get deceived but also so tricky is because you would think it's just a person and it sounds good that he knows how to come at you but truthfully it is the spirit um I hope that is clear. I know he that has an ear will hear and it'll be clear on that wise. So I'll continue by the Holy Ghost. Don't don't become prideful, saints. You have to be prayerful. You have to be steadfast. That's what he say. You got to be steadfast. You got to be vigilant. You got to be watching because you have to be able to identify what is God and what is not God. And so many people are so quick to, you know, jump away from man and jump away from um and when I and what the Lord means when he says jump away from man is you don't want to hearken to God using the voice of a man or the voice of a woman or what have you, because he uses prophetess. He does speak through prophetess as well, um, as well as his prophets, uh preachers, which is the way that our faith is strengthened. So Woe be unto you who says, I don't need no man to preach to me. You are out of compliance. You've, you have literally been deceived by the spirit of the devil if you're saying that you don't need someone to preach to you. That you see how tricky it is? Because the devil will come and tell you, well, the Holy Ghost said he'll teach you all things. But did not the devil also quote scriptures to Jesus? Mandi Ashanda. Hey, glory. Line must be upon line, precept upon precept. It's not a man. It's a spirit. And so you have to try the spirit, whether it be of God, not try the spirit by the spirit. That's not what the Bible says, because if you try the spirit by the spirit, you're going to be trying it by your spirit. It's not what the Bible says. It says whether it be of God. And that spirit is the one that confesses that Jesus is Lord, not says 
that Jesus is Lord. Look at the original text. Look at what it means to confess. It means to make a covenant. So that means there has to be a lifestyle or fruit that shows forth that this person is of the seed of God. We have to break this stuff down, saints, and it's very important that we break this stuff down and we know who is who because the deception is real and we're in that last wave of the great falling away. And the great falling away is happening because people are being given to every wind and doctrine. They're running to preachers and teachers with uh, uh, itching ears, heaping, heaping unto themselves leaders, okay? Here's the problem with that. If you uh, say, oh, this person is the only person teaching the truth or this person is so great and so dynamic and you're heaping yourself a leader this is the person i follow so that that is that is right there boom that's your problem you should only follow someone because they're following christ not well their teaching is just so it's just so good but is it bible is it god did god send you there and god can also send you somewhere else he's not going to just send you to one person one watereth one planteth but god adds the increase and so as a body it is not meet for you to just be given to one person and only hear one person teaching <laughs> That's a false doctrine that we teach. You should only eat from one table. No, we're supposed to eat together. Oh, Jesus, we're supposed to suck together. So this, I should be able to be fed from my brother in New York who should be fed by my brother uh, down in Florida and Texas. It shouldn't be we can't encourage one another and preach to one another and feed one another. We ought to feed and come together one another and to grow on that wise by the Holy Ghost. And so don't be deceived by this one man doctrine and this one teacher doctrine. And there's only one person teaching the truth. No, there's not a lot of us, but there is a, a, a remnant of us and of a certainty we have to connect on that why by the Holy Ghost. Saints, don't get away from the preaching of the gospel. Flee from the people who say that there's no need for preaching anymore. I'm talking about real preaching. Get like flee from those people who say there's no need from that. Because the Bible says that that's a part that's a part of that's part of what we need, right? That we cannot hear unless there's a preacher. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? And Jesus said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. Well, how he's gonna say it? Through his preachers, line upon line. So don't get away from people preaching. Oh, see, I can't receive it unless they say it like this because, you know, that preaching and stuff is charismatic, is energetic. Well, Jesus said that's what it takes for your faith to be strengthened. So perhaps there's something in you. Your church hurt is not church. Your church trauma is not God's responsibility. That's not God's fault. And if we can be honest and be accountable, most of it is your fault, too. OK, so, yes, some of it is false teaching and some of it is what you've experienced. And some of it is people scattering the flock. Absolutely. But there comes a time where you know when it's the spirit of God and you have to get over your, yourself. Praise him and say, see, I was hurt by this, but I, I recognize this is the spirit of God. Deep call to the deep. Amen. So don't run from preaching. Don't run from preaching. Don't run from a good preach because that good preach is what's going to strengthen your faith. How can they hear unless, he, you know, there be a preacher? How can he preach unless he said so then that's what your scripture said. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing what the word of God. And so when the word of God is being preached, you cling to that, you cling to it and it'll be clear. It'll be clear. You'll hear it. You'll know. Um, and so we must understand in this hour that the deception of this hour is not coming from people. It's coming from a spirit. It is controlling people. It is using people, possessing people. Even some people are scared of that. Here's the other word by the Holy Ghost. We cannot get to such a spooky place to where we don't think that the miraculous things can happen. By the Holy Ghost, the Lord said um, even here on this wise not too long ago that w the church would become <clears throat> the new conspiracy theorists, not in the sense of we are conspiracy theorists in the sense where we say things that aren't founded or grounded, but that what we say will be so absurd, it seems, that people won't believe us or that they would liken us to conspiracy theorists, not realizing that those things which the Lord has spoken to us on this wise is indeed the truth. Saints, don't don't get discouraged when you start sounding crazy. Don't get discouraged. Good God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus, for your encouragement. I'm feeling encouraged. Don't get discouraged. Thank you, Jesus. I'm praising him, y'all. Don't get discouraged when you seem crazy. Don't. Ah, yeah. Glory. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Don't get discouraged when you when it's peculiar, when it's strange, because even that in and of itself, hallelujah, is the fulfillment of what he said. He said, you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You're a holy nation. And so when we get to the places where we are operating in the place that God has called us to, that is not a place for us to be a uh, 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 turn out. Or, or thrown to the side or discouraged, it is a place for us to rejoice in as much as ye are partakers uh, in Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed, we should be met with exceeding joy. So listen, y'all, uh, we don't have to get to the place where we are discouraged because people think we're crazy. But this is the times that we ought to dig down. Listen, if you can believe, if you can believe that Jesus rose from the dead, why is it so impossible for you to believe these things that are coming to pass now? As a believer, it, you cannot not believe what is happening now and call yourself a true believer if if you believe Jesus rose from the dead. It doesn't work like that, okay? Um, so please, 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 please keep that in mind. And to recap this section before I move on about the Holy Ghost, I want to obey what he said. These are demons that have possessed these people, okay? Demonic beings, okay? The Antichrist, he's a mimic, okay? So, of course, he's going to have it that he tries to take, um, well, we know even by scriptures that he will take a, a, a form, you know, that human form, because um, he's going to try to mimic what Christ did, you know, uh, to be a false savior, the Antichrist is. Why are these humans pushing these agendas so hard? Uh, don't they know it's the mark of the beast? Don't they know? That's the point, y'all. That's the whole point. They aren't, they're not domain or in control by, the, by those those humans. It's these spirits, <clears throat> some they may co covenant to, you know. Like what you all think, what we think sometimes is so mystical, is really practical. It's literally, literally practical, okay. You believe in Christ. You believe he rose from the dead. You have proof, Right. The Holy Ghost. That's why the, the speaking in tongues by the Holy Ghost has the initial evidence, according to Acts chapter two, nineteen and 10. Those are the chapters and the other chapters there is essential because we have physical proof beyond the historical stuff, physical everyday proof of him living in us. Right. So if you can believe that these things are happening, like he said, how can how can how how can't you believe these sort of out of the box things as we tried to say how can't you believe that and see that's the danger of preaching that the holy ghost isn't essential and that the initial evidence of tongues isn't essential and isn't bible that's the danger that's a false doctrine i know some of you have been taught that and strongly believe that but go down back on your knees and really talk to the living god and ask him to fill you with the holy ghost watch what the initial evidence is why because he's essential for you to know the reality of his presence it so when you get rid of that, you have a hey glory, hey glory. You take away the practical nature. I'm not talking about babbling. I'm talking about legit tongues, and it's it, it's 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 real. So oh, there's so much the Holy Ghost has shown me. He said, "Keep sharing about the Holy Ghost." Okay, so some are deceiving themselves because they're thinking it's humans that they have to be worried about, <laughs> and then others just don't truly believe in this all at once okay these things are happening just like the scripture said they're happening just like the scripture said word for word note for note beat for beat and you have you have to you have to be plugged into what the word says in this hour or you're gonna miss it you're gonna miss it if you're not plugged into what the word says many people are talking about um the 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 river euphrates and it drying up and that's bible and that's correct amen but don't be given to the people who say it's dried up. Those are clickbait videos. Woe unto them for being false witnesses. They will have their part in the lake of fire. That's what the Bible says. A false, they're false witnesses. They're going to have their lake in the fire. So you got to read and know. The, the lake ain't dried up yet. It's almost. And yes, that is prophecy being fulfilled. But it goes to show you, hey, where we, where, hey, glory, where we are in time. It goes to show you that and to show you to get ready. But don't, don't, y'all, we got to be sober. So that's one of the things the Lord showed me, well, last night, 
And I keep sharing by the Holy Ghost with you all. I don't share all of the dreams that the Lord gives me, but only that which he has said to me to share unto you word, even as he's spoken to Daniel and the prophets of old and those of time to tell them to seal up certain things. This is what the Lord will do. The Lord will tell his prophets, don't say something. <laughs> okay. Um, but this is one of those things that the Lord has allowed me to share. And it was a very simple dream, y'all. There was so much violence. And, and the Lord spoke not too long ago, and yet he's reminding us again that great calamity is coming, even in this country, even in, in the world. And it is centered around violence. Of course, we know that even by the scriptures. Um, but the Lord showed me everyone had a gun. Everyone had a gun. <laughs> everyone had a gun. Everyone was shooting and killing. You, you think it's just these one isolated events of people in these mass shootings? No, it's going to be everyone. Everyone's going to have a gun. Um, and everyone had a weapon and everyone had a gun and everyone was just, just killing. Um, and people were killing. He said, this is important. People were killing, but people weren't dying. People were killing, but people weren't dying. It was just constant recycled violence. Um, and then and after people were killing now, and I know what some people are going to say, and let me stop by the Holy Ghost because he said, clarify, I don't watch Netflix and The Walking Dead and the shows like I don't. I don't watch that stuff. I do not watch that stuff. OK. Um, and I know about them because the students talk about it. And, you know, what I share unto you, though, is likened to what I've heard described and what I've seen on that wise concerning zombies or what have you. Right. But in this particular thing, listen, people were shooting. And as they were shooting and using these weapons, they were they were dead, but they weren't dead. And here is the interpretation of it. It is not the necessarily the, the, the zombie situation. That's not it, saints. Listen to what the Lord says. He said in that day, and he's talking even concerning the catching away of the saints, that some will rise, right, in terms of the catching away and going to meet him in the air. But then some will rise to everlasting contempt is what the Bible says. We don't often talk about this concerning the catching away of the saints. Then here's what the Lord, he brought that scripture up in the dream. And then he followed even saying this on this wise, even now the interpretation thereof is that we have to recognize that this is only the beginning. Death is only the beginning. We used to teach and preach this. Death is only the beginning that so many people are concerned about dying now and it's dying next that people are not talking about. The violence, the choices, the decisions that you are making. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, my God from Zion, I thank you. The decisions that you are making now is what he's going to judge for eternity. Some of you are so short minded and short sighted. You don't see the eternity. You see earth. That's all you see. You don't mind the things of the spirit. You mind the things of the flesh. And the danger is that all flesh is going to pass away. So it will be impossible for you to actually see what is coming. And that is why so many of you have not let go of the things of this world and still have such a grip on the things of this world is because you mind still the things of this world, not thinking for what the spirit is saying. And the spirit is saying, this is about to pass away even soon hereafter. Everything that you see, everything that you're attached to, everything that you deem important, even your family, even your friends, even the houses and the lands that you own. God is about to get rid of it. And too many of us are still too strong attached to it. And as a result, we are going to die again. We are going to die again. And we're going to die and we're going to be dying for eternity because we don't know how to let go. And God is calling and saying, let go, saints. Let go, let go, let go, let go. People of God, let go, let go, let go, let go. Be purged, let go, and live this free life. It's Amashe Kandi Aman Subai. Hitemendio say, thank you. It is time for the people of God to let go. I said to you, saith the Lord, come out from among them and be ye separate. I say to you, saith the Lord, that you ought to be separate from the word. I said to you that you ought to have all things in common. The reason why it is so difficult is because the majority of those of you who say you love and believe me don't know me. You don't know me because if you knew me, you would leave your communities and come unto me. This is the hour where we have to come together. We got to come out of this world. We got to get into our own communities. It is not just this church. It's not just those who have this amount of faith. 
all of us. I gave you the blueprint. The reason why everything is not working in the body of Christ, and I'm putting it in quotations by the Holy Ghost, because it's not the true body of Christ, because the true body of Christ is preparing, and they are making moves to do what I said do, even according to Acts, even in the time of Josiah, even in the times of the great kings, even in the time of David, even in the time of Solomon, even in the time of the prophets, even in the time of the judges, even in the time of the disciples, where I said that the church ought to have all things in common. There are those in the remnant is doing it. Those of you that are doing it, be aggressive. Be aggressive about it. Be aggressive about buying that land. Not because you want land, not because you're attached to land, but because you got to escape, because you got to get away, but because you have to live in communities. Be aggressive about getting it and I'll bless you. I'll sustain you. I'll make your path straight, save the Lord. Why? Because you are being obedient even to my word. Thank you. Oh my glory. I'm Glory. 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 Hey, hear ye the word of the Lord even on this wise. The reason why so many of you are not being blessed and are living in a curse and a perpetual curse is because you think that when I'm talking about tithes, all I'm talking about is your money. But I said, bring all of your, hey my God, I thank you, the increase all of the increase to my house. Some of you are giving me your money, but you're not giving me your time. I said all of it. Some of you are giving me your time, but you're not giving me your heart. I said all of it. Bring me anything that increases. If you get into a new relationship, I need a tithe of that. If you get a new, oh my God, if you get a new opportunity, I need a tithe of that. If you get that money, sure, I need a tithe of that so that my people, don't you realize that the same curse that befell Ananias and Sapphira, where they were killed because they withheld, is the same tithe that he was calling for even in Malachi where he said the Lord changes not therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed that it is the blueprint for the church to exist for you to tithe and give God everything all of your increase a percentage of all of your increase not because he needs it but because his body is sustained thereby that even in the Old Testament in the time of the Levites the Levites those who service God's house those who service the kingdom those who service what God was was doing those who service the tabernacle of the congregation thereof they were living off of the tithing and no one was without because those who had the spirit were distributing this goes back to the necessity of bishops it's not people that have lived or have 10,000 members or 100 members or just because they've got 50 members in their church you want to elevate them so that your organization is bigger that is not a bishop a bishop is somebody who has the gift of administration who has the desire to work the office whereby which they are responsible for distributing the resources that are gathered because all and everyone in the church gives everything they have to the church. It is not an anomaly. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4 is not an anomaly. It is the blueprint for the church. And the curse of the tithing is not just because you don't give God your money. Some of you are still cursed and you give God 10% every single month and you're still cursed. You know why? Because you ain't giving him nothing else. Jesus, Jesus, you are still cursed because you have given him nothing else. You all you've given him is your coins. You've not given him 10 percent. Here's the clarity by the Holy Ghost. He said you have not even given him 10 (laughs) percent of your time because you're supposed to give him all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. But your time. Where's the 10% of that? Your resources, not just your money, your food. Why don't the church have a food bank? Why don't the church have, have a refrigerator? Why don't the ch- Because you are holding that stuff back. It don't belong to you. It belongs to God. And now we got this false doctrine not talking about you don't need a tithe. You don't understand the scriptures. You don't know the Bible. You don't know the Bible. The blueprint is literally right there. And it is why so many people are, are cursed with poverty and cursing this stuff is because they're robbing God. And the bishops ain't distributing the resources. Whew. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Saints, we have to we have to do this. We have to do this better. We have to do this better. We have to do this better. Listen, this is the time where the Lord is so he's so serious and he's so He's so adamant about us getting this right. We have to get this right. We have to get this right. Understand and know on this wise, save the Lord, even concerning the times that we are in and even concerning 
the distribution on this wise and even concerning the way that the church is supposed to operate we have to get to the place where we do it even as the word says we have to get back to the place where we are seeking him and where we're going after his heart we have to and so as the dream continued to go on and please excuse me for my moving around i, I told you i'm cleaning as the dream continued on the lord just had this it wasn't even a bright light it's like the sky was m the most beautiful so after he showed me everyone like killing themselves in the violence it was it was trumpets you know and you know i don't i don't minimize that but i don't want to spend too much time there um because it it was a a sound i can't describe it was trumpets but i can't describe the the blasting thereof. Oh, I pray you catch it in the spirit. But even the trumpets on that wise, were, as they were blasting and as they were going, I, I looked up by the Holy Ghost because I, I knew what was happening. I knew I was like, OK, Lord, you were showing me something even to be seen thereof concerning the rapture. Not a date, not a time for no man knows the day nor hour. But he was showing me. Just the, 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 cause it's not even what it exactly is going to be. Cause I don't even know, right? Uh, but it was certainly the iteration or the likeness of the clarity of that time and that hour. And when I looked up, I tell y'all, the, the blue of the sky, it's like the clouds were like going like this and like being pulled away. And like the blue of the sky was like, like, like the, I can only describe by the Holy Ghost, like I saw what the sky was when he first separated the waters from the firmament. Like it, it, it's like it rolled back and I could see what the sky was when he separated it, when he first separated it from the firmament. That's the best way I can describe you. That's how blue it was. That's how clear it was. And of course... The, the 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 pulling up you know the i was i was coming up off the ground now i had gotten shot several times in this dream and i didn't feel not one of them but i knew i had gotten shot because they was literally the gun they had guns like right on me but I just started to rise we just started to rise and i had my my family with me and we just started to rise and then of course the lord shifted me and took me out of the dream and he told me today today's the day i need you to share all these things which i've said to you yes i write this stuff down I do because the Lord said to do so. And so I, I, these are the things which he has hearkened, uh, told me to hearken to and to share even unto us on this wise. Saints, we have to get so much more aggressive about these things and let go and let loose on this world as if this is the only reality. This is not. There is a world and we know this world. And, you know, it's funny because the Bible talks about that the world's plural, right? We have to understand and live in the reality that there is more than this and that there is more than this to come and that we are on the edge and the precipice of the coming of the Lord and not just the coming of the Lord, the catching away first. Right. And then even in the catching away, we are on the precipice of the change of a eternity, a change that has never happened. We have to be ready, saints. We got to be ready. We got to got to be ready. He's so good. OK, here we go. Um, I'm just continuing from where we left off. God is so good. So, and truly what he says, he'll bring all things to your remembrance. Because there was a note that I, I didn't get to write down, but he just brought it right back to my remembrance. So listen, and we're still talking about concerning the necessity of us being in communities, right? Here's something that the Lord, he's been pressing. And I've shared it with some fellow pastors um, down this way. When I say down this way, I'm talking about the DMV, DC, Delaware, Maryland, um, New York, and I've been sharing it with some some pastors and some apostles and some some prophets, and just strengthening and teaching by the Holy Ghost on this wise concerning the truth of us needing to be in communities. And here's what the Lord has been saying and blasting. And I I, I know by the Holy Ghost, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. We have to teach correctly, back on that conversation of false doctrine, we have to start teaching correctly the difference between gifts and talents, and we have to start teaching and encouraging the saints concerning using their talents. 
Their talents are so important because when we get to the place where we have to and we should be in our own communities, we will need both gifts and talents. Talents is what the Lord gives you where he expects a return off of. He expects fruit from your talents. According to Matthew, is that the fifth chapter or the 15th chapter? According to Matthew, where he's talking about the parable of talents, right? He expects a return. The master came, gave the talents, and they didn't have it. He, you know, take from them, give it to them. Same in Luke, I believe it ex examines that. and Recognize that the talents is what he expects fruit to be made of, right? But hear this part, saints. Here's the important part. Your gifts is for the church. Your gifts is so that the church can be edified. Being prophetic is not a talent. You, you can't cultivate that become skillful as a prophet no you grow in your gifting by using your gifting that's we're not talking about skill you don't you understand even the school of prophets in the times of the bible were not because they was practicing on one another it was being around an environment where that edification and where that spirit that kindred spirit that deep calling to the deep that 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 was being cultivated on that wise i'm an educator so i i can break down on this wise what it means cultivation it's not the same it's not me teaching you how to become more skillful. It's not the same as me teaching you how to embrace what's already there. Those are two different things. OK, teaching skill or enhancing skill is not necessarily about what is inherently there. Um, oh, God, I can give you the technique to enhance your skill, your gifting there's something that only God can give you because of who you are. You can do it, right? Severally as he will, as his ability. Those are where the giftings come in. The talents is what he's trusting, entrusting to you to make fruit off of, right? But you can learn the skill of that. You can learn, you can grow, you can you can build on top of those skills. I, I can't make it any more plain than this. I'm going to try it this way by the Holy Ghost. As a teacher, I teach everyone or I can teach everyone how to sing. There's certain things you do. There's a breath you take. There's a vowel. There's shaping the vowel. There's shaping the placement that will allow you to produce a sound. There's a mimicking of pitch. But there are some people, there are some people who when they sing, something happens to us. You can't teach that. You cannot teach that. Oh, my God. Here. See, see, listen, listen to the words of an educator. I cannot put in you the ability for you to make me feel what you're singing. I can expose you and encourage you and push you as a teacher and as someone who has the gift of exhortation to tap into what is already there. I'm not going to spend that time with someone who doesn't have that gift. And they're not going to spend that time with me to get pushed on that wise if they don't have a gift. It is the people that have the gift that are going to spend time with me to learn how to actually produce and to push out or to express what is inside of them. The people who just want to be able to sing will be good at the fact that they can sing backgrounds and hold it down. They're not really they don't really care about their voice touching someone because that's not the point. <sighs> And I just use that as an example for the gifted, because when we have this, something like a school of prophets, it is putting them in an environment where they learn how to tap into. Right. Where they have the functionality and the continual practice. And I'm putting it in quotes for clarity's sake, the, the, the continual uh, uh, exposure opportunity to utilize or to expose or to explore what is already there. Skillful people is set in an academic time with an academic expectation, okay? This might not make too much sense to a whole bunch of people, but here by the Holy Ghost, when we start teaching people how to utilize their talents, we will start to get those things in the body to where we don't need the things of the world. For example, God has given me the talent. I am a talented, skillful musician, artist. That is not a gift. The gift is prophecy. That's the gift God has given me. It's one of the gifts. 
God has given me. I'm not going to minimize what you have done for me, Lord. And I thank you and I give you praise. One of the gifts God has done for me is and given to me by way of the Holy Ghost. And before I was even formed in my mother's womb, ordained me to be such as, as, as in prophet, as a prophet, as a prophet in prophecy. So when I sing, when and I'm not the world's greatest singer, when I play, and I'm not the world's greatest musician, I'm pretty good to God be the glory, but I'm not the world's greatest. I know people who can, who can, who can, who what I would say, who I would say are more skillful than me. But the difference is the anointing saints. The difference is the Lord moves through my hands. David, oh, Shiloh, God, I thank you. The Bible says, that David was skillful. The Bible says the Levites were skillful. The Bible says that Asaph was a skillful musician, writer, composer, but Asaph was also a seer. He was a prophet. So the reason why his psalms hit differently was because he was a prophet. Oh my God. So his gifting edified the body. Watch this. And his talent occupied the harvest that is deep i hope you hear about the by the holy ghost his talent occupied the body it helped us and i'm not using the word entertained it helped us stay satisfied thank you holy ghost he said y'all get it it helped us stay satisfied in god alone the musicals that i write the shows that i write the clothes that i create is not to entertain us. Hey, my Shonda, glory. Hey, it's so that we can remain satisfied, so that we don't have to turn on Netflix, so that we don't have to turn on the TV, but we can come together and put our own musicals and plays on and be just as satisfied because we have the talent. And those talents are producing fruits. What are they producing? The fruits of the spirit are patience. Hey, Woo. From watching this musical, we got more patience. From listening to this song, we got more meekness. Y'all hear it in the Holy Ghost? It's not making us lascivious. It's not making us lustful. But it's proving and creating the fruit of the Spirit that God wants from us in this hour. And that is the talents. That is the parable of talents. What have you made? And it is exposing and exploring and imparting and allowing those talents to make more talents, more fruits, and more return because more people are staying with God and staying in God, etc. And so I got excited by the Holy Ghost. What we do with our talents are essential. And I testify on this wise. We just did a musical, Daniel, Servant of the Most High God, which is a musical I wrote by the Holy Ghost, 2015, by the Holy Ghost, concerning the prophecies of Daniel, and even the whole story of Daniel. And, you know, of course, we want someone to get saved, sanctified. But don't you know that the testimonies at the end were about believers who were refocused, encouraged to press on? This was what I needed. This is exactly, and I make my boast in the Lord, humble should hear their love and be glad, that it is necessary and essential that we don't have to outsource not to be entertained because no one said I was entertained. They were blessed. That's a fruit. According to the Bible, according to Deuteronomy, according to what the scriptures say about what fruit is and what blessings are. This is a fruit. So God allowed me to produce talents on that wise. And so this is what God is calling for us to do. Even in this season, making these musicals, making these productions, not for the sake of production and money and all that stuff, but so that we have it when we are in our secluded place. Even we just did a musical, Daniel, Servant of the Most High God, which is a musical I wrote by the Holy Ghost 2015 by the Holy Ghost concerning the prophecies of Daniel, and even the whole story of Daniel. And, you know, of course, we want someone to get saved, sanctified. But don't you know that the testimonies at the end were about believers who were refocused, encouraged to press on? This was what I needed. This is exactly, and I make my boast in the Lord, humble should hear their love and be glad, that it is necessary and essential that we don't have to outsource not to be entertained, because no one said I was entertained. They were blessed. That's a fruit, according to the Bible, according to Deuteronomy, according to what the scriptures say about what fruit is and what blessings are. This is a fruit. So God allowed me to produce talents on that wise. And so this is what God is calling for us to do. Even in this season, making these musicals, making these productions, not for the sake of production and money and all that stuff, but so that we have it when we are in our secluded place even. And so by the Holy Ghost, we have to understand 
This is why it's essential for us to teach these talents and these giftings correctly, because this is how we not need the world. It may not have been a complete sentence, but you understand by the Holy Ghost. This is how we not need the world is by understanding that the, that ability for you to build a house and construction. That's not that's not a gift, baby. That's not a gift. That's a talent. And your talent is going to be necessary because we're not going to be able to outsource to the world to build houses. We're going to need doctors. See, see, see. You got the gift of healing, do you? Yeah. But but your your skill with a knife. We're going to need that skill. We're going to need that talent. And the fruit of it is not giving it to the world. It's allowing us to not be without when it's time for us. And the time is coming. The time is even now, save the Lord, where we need to be in these communities, saints. We got to be in these communities. We have to start building now. Self-sustaining communities in the body of Christ. We have to now. 2024 is going to be a year where you see it super clear if the Lord should delay his coming because even 2023 saved the Lord, even 2023 saved the Lord, even in this hour and the last couple of days hereby, you will see the necessity of being totally separate from the world, saved the Lord. So don't think it's strange. Even if the Lord should delay his coming, don't think it's strange. Don't think it's strange. And even if the Lord should not tarry, but come even hereafter, don't think it's strange that it is the mindset that sets you aside to allow you to be ready to let go. How many of you would be sad if the rapture happened? How many believers would be upset? Truthfully, because I'm like, oh, no, I'd be happy, child, to see Lord in the sky. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You probably wouldn't even be able to get caught up because you're still too attached to down here. He said, let this mind, he said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He going to be looking at the inward parts, not because you in church, not because you would. No, he's going to be looking at where your heart is and where your posture is. So we must posture ourselves and set ourselves. Saints, these talents that God has given you that you've been working in the secular world. You're just so talented of keeping record of people's stuff and tracking stuff. These talents are great. And don't say, no, child is a gift. No, come on. We're calling the thing. The gifts of God have been outlined in his scripture. And the reason why that is important is because you are responsible, obligated, according to Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself, the Lamb of God, the Lion of Judah. God himself has charged us that we are to make fruit off of our talents. And if you ignore the things that are talents and call those gifts, you will ignore making fruits because then you'll say, well, if people don't accept my gift. That's on them. No. You're responsible for making fruit off of your talents. That is what you are supposed to work, which means you got to know what they are and you have to invest them in the right places. Hence, do not give your pearls to the swine, your talents to the swine. The world's not supposed to have our talents. World's not supposed to have our music. World's not supposed to have our musicals. The world's not supposed to have none of that. None of that because there's no fruit. In the world. Didn't you hear him say, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall also he reap. That there are some that cast seeds onto stony grounds, and some that cast seeds into fruitful grounds. Did you not remember what the Lord saith, saith the Lord? Did you not remember that this is even the parable of those things and the things to come hereafter? So well, saints, because the harvest is coming. God bless you all. I love you all with the love of God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you.